All right, so next up we have the gallery field. So if we jump over to our dashboard, let's go to our custom fields and field groups, home page. Let's add a new field down here. Let's just call this gallery. We're gonna add the gallery as the field type. So the options that I typically use here are image array. This is gonna give us the most information back right out of the gate. The image URL and the image ID are, well, they return exactly that, the URL and the ID. And when you're creating galleries and sliders and all that, you wanna make sure that you have a little bit more control of how everything is being output and the image array gives you just that. Everything else is pretty much going to be standard. We wanna make sure that there's at least two images in here so there is something to uh, show. And I mean, let's set a maximum of 10 here. We don't wanna go nuts. The other thing, I usually also set these but we're kind of gonna wait on this. This is only really if you're concerned about somebody uploading too big of images or just astronomical. Um, height uh, images that have a huge height and width but we're not too worried about that but if I were handing this off to a client I definitely would fill these out just to make sure we're getting exactly what we're looking for so let's go back and let's save this let's go to our home page and scroll down to the very bottom all right, so the gallery field. Let me just give you kind of my soapbox of that. So the gallery field is a little bit more than what the name implies. You can do a lot more with it than just creating a simple gallery. You can even create, you know, a swiper kind of slider thing, which is what we're going to be doing. Um, just to kind of illustrate and drive the point home that don't really think of this as just a gallery. And I'll show you what, you, what I mean. So let's add a few images to this gallery. Um, let's grab these guys, a taller image like this, and a couple of those guys. Let's hit select. And a couple features here that I want to show off. The first is that you can actually drag these around. You can reorder them and when we get our image array back, it's going to come in the order that we have dragged it here. So we can guarantee that the first image is going to be the Statue of Liberty and the last image is going to be of the ocean. Um, and once you click on one of these, it will kind of shrink everything down. You can give it some information here. And specifically, I want to make sure that we have the alt text because for accessibility purposes, I want to make sure that screen readers can read those and, and that'll come back in the image array here. Statue of Liberty. And I'm just up, hit update and it'll resave the image for us. The other thing that we can do is we can bulk sort. Um, we can sort by uploaded date. We can sort by date modified, which is a little bit different by title even. So, uh, or reverse the current order. So we can do quite a bit of things here and that makes it really nice. So let's save this and let's get jump into some code. So over here in our code, we are going to go over to our front page template. And let's just create a new section here. Section divider. Let's just put an HR in there just so we know where we're working. The next thing I want to do, let's just open up some PHP tags and let's see what uh, that image array looks like. We're going to do get field gallery. We've done this before. Let's go back and view our home page and hit refresh. Scroll down a bit and okay, here we go. So this is what the image array looks like. It is an array of arrays and every child array has a lot of information in it. So every single um, image has its own array and we have you know, file name, file size, what post it was uploaded to, the date it was, widths and heights, but really we want to focus on the sizes array because that's really what you're going to typically use when you're creating a gallery is you don't want to just upload this 4,000 pixel wide and to 2,700 pixel tall 
image to your gallery as like a thumbnail or anything like that. You're going to want to use one of these images as kind of the preview and then the full size image, which would be URL as the thing that, uh, ac that actually pops up. However, we're not going to really create like a pop-up gallery like that. We're going to do kind of more of a slider thing just to kind of show you the basic functionalities here. So now that we kind of know what we're looking for, let's jump over to our code. Let's get rid of this. And let's create um, a new section here. Div, oops, div class of grid container. And this is just going to make sure that everything's lined up properly. And the other thing that we're going to do is we're going to be putting in Swiper here. If you haven't used Swiper before, it's just pretty much my go-to little um, like touch slider. It makes it so you can kind of drag some images and, and do that kind of stuff. And this is what I'm going to be using to kind of show off some of the functionality here. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is actually get it installed. And I'm just going to use these guys here. I will be doing a tutorial on the proper way to get these enqueued, but just to show off and get us up and running real quick, we're going to be doing this the, the, the easy way. We're going to cheat by just dropping these directly into our markup. So we wanted the um, JavaScript to be down here in the footer in footer.php. And let's grab the styles and drop it in the header. And I'm also changing this to 4.5.0 to make sure we get the version that I'm looking for. And let's go back to the front page here. And the markup needs to look a little something like this. It needs to be div class of swiper wrapper. Oh, I apologize, it's swiper container. So let's end that. And then we have their swiper wrapper class swiper wrapper. And inside of this is where kind of the magic is going to be happening, but this is where the slides go. But before we can do that, we need to get outside of our swiper wrapper. And we need to do a class of swiper pagination. And that doesn't have anything in it. That's going to be added dynamically by the library. We're just giving it a, a house. And then we're also going to give it swiper button previous. And the same one, but next. And that's just kind of the skeleton of your basic swiper slider. So now that we have that, this is where all of our slides are going to go, like I just said. So let's open up some PHP tags. We're going to loop over what it gave us. So if we do for each good field gallery as an image, And do it a little bit different. I want to look a little bit more like that. And then I want my end for each down here. So now that we can loop over every single individual array in that array of arrays, we're going to need to output something. So for every image, we want to output, well, an image tag with a class of Swiper slide. So we will get, oops, not, we're not an ending div there. Um, and then we need to take the source and apply it here. So let's echo out something here. We need to take our image. And remember, this is an array, so we need to go down to that sizes key. And let's grab, there was one in there called Featured Medium. Let's just grab that. 
And the other thing we want to make sure that we have is the alt tag. Let's echo it out. That's shorthand, by the way, if you've never used this before, that's shorthand for echo. So it would be the same thing as PHP echo, but it's just a little bit nicer to look at. And then that is going to be image alt. And that should give us kind of our basic skeleton of, of what we need. Let's take a look at what's happening on the front end right now. So if we re reload this, we get this, but it doesn't really work. We just see the soccer field. And when I try and click on any of these things or, or swipe or anything like that, we don't get it. So let's um, make sure we hook up everything in JavaScript. And Again, this is probably not where I would put everything, but this is just kind of just to show you the basics of what we're go what's going on here. Typically, this would be inside of its own file. You know what? I'm just going to copy and paste this because I don't want to make you watch me type all that. But long story short, we're just targeting that swiper container, which we created up here. And then it knows to look for all these other classes that we've created. So if we um, give it that, we're telling it the pagination, what classes to look for there, and same with the navigation. And we just want it to loop infinitely, center the slides, and only have one per view. So let's save that. And we're going to refresh. And now things will look a little bit better. We got that pagination down there. And you can do this. So we have ourselves like a little gallery swiper thing here. And like I said, it really depends on kind of what you're going for, but just kind of think of the gallery field as just a way to get a giant blob of images. It doesn't necessarily have to be a gallery. It could be a slider like this. It could be just simply a list of images. It really doesn't need to be tied to the gallery term itself. It just kind of the interface that is back here is the thing that kind of looks like it should go in a gallery, but you know, be creative with it. And, um, yeah. So if you have any questions or anything like that, make sure to drop a comment. If you're new here, make sure to subscribe. I'll be updating this series along with a lot of other random WordPress videos and tutorials as time goes on. Um, and in the next video, we're going to be touching the options page. This allows you to, give some more control to the back end of the WordPress site. So in the dashboard, you can give it its own set of ACF fields and you can change virtually anything from that area. So we're going to be going over that. Also a very handy skill to have. So stay tuned for that and I'll see you in the next one. Hey guys, I hope you've enjoyed the video so far. I wanted to take a quick second to introduce you to Kinsta. Kinsta is a hosting platform that specializes in WordPress. Everything is geared towards making your site easy to manage and blazing fast. They offer free SSL certificates, a free CDN, and plans starting at just 30 bucks a month. If you're interested in hosting for yourself or for a client, go ahead and click the link in the description. If you end up signing up, you'll be supporting me so I can continue making these videos. Anyway, have a great day and hope to see you in the next video.